lot of, you know, you know, you see these rabbits and suddenly when they act in those have those platforms that are flapping and you know, they just go helter skelter. That was the uh, situation in which many were not actually from this uh, Very little did they anticipate that uh, what we got into at that point in time about two years back, I mean, we were kind of running along happily and suddenly all breaks were kind of uh, pulled back and, you know, this whole great story about, you know, going on to this nine, nine and a half, ten percent uh, growth and, you know, that it's a different kind of adrenaline and a flow which was going through the organization. I continue to feel in our own organization, uh, we were never, our managers, our leaders were never trained in in any other language other than the language you wrote. You understand? Most of you all have both experience here, so you would understand what I'm saying. So it was all about my colleagues in Beko who have worked. It was all about how do I build capacity, where do I get the next set of people, where do I get the freshers, how do I make sure that the fulfillment happens with the recruitment engine, you know, humming along and you know, firing on all cylinders and whatnot. It was not a language of consolidation. It was not a language of constraint. You understand what I mean? It was not about how do I actually make sure that uh, I conserve because that really was not the moment, right? So you were like on a fast moving treadmill and if you are on a fast moving treadmill, you know what happens as the speed increases, you have to increase your own speed and if you slow down, either you will fall. So the choice is either you actually step out or you continue to pick up your speed and that's the momentum on which all of us were brought up. The whole generation of leaders and managers and they were very, very untutored, let me say in any other way of actually dealing with a situation which uh, they have never, never encountered. And it's not only true for managers in this country, but across. And in that, they responded in a variety of ways, right? They responded in, in what actually appeared to them at that point in time intuitively, right? Because really they had no one to actually look up to. Uh, they had uh, no other experience to rely on. So they had to actually respond and respond quickly. So a whole series of things which companies did at that point in time. I mean, some of them actually quickly looked at in terms of whether I'm structurally all right, should I actually look at in terms of organizing myself a little differently. Uh, right sizing is a euphemism for word which is even more harsh, but a lot of companies actually resorted to that and did it, and so on. You know, there are people who kind of got into some, you know, belt tightening in an extreme way. Many companies almost on a knee jerkish manner. So if you look at the reactions, Right? By most of the organization, more than being comprehensive, it was rather confusing. And it wasn't like in a rush. You have to actually respond. If you don't respond, uh, maybe you don't have a clue of how to actually deal with the situation. And uh, you have your answerable to your board, your answerable to your top management. And you have to actually get on and get moving. And then you look around in terms of what others are doing. Every day you, every day you open the paper. There is one news or the other which is really not actually building or instilling any further confidence. So it's just the mood is getting more and more depressing. And uh, people were trying through a method of trial and error than through any kind of reasoning. Right? And in that uh, kind of a scenario, what happens is not necessarily everything goes fine. So while we got into the situation, I have to say that the, if I look back, and it's an honest uh, assessment of mine, I think as Indian leadership, while we could, Indian leadership, as I said, that the companies in this country, uh, we could be faulted not having experienced it. My own assessment and through a lot of interactions I have with my colleagues globally across from other well established, well known companies, I think uh, we did, we fared much better than many of the other companies, right? On any of the parameters, whether it's in terms of just the thoughtfulness, whether it's in being able to just make sure that our action was prudent and it was well balanced in many manner. Not everything they have just gone right the way we actually thought about it. But I think that's not the story and that's not what I'm actually trying to talk about here. What I'm trying to talk about is that just the way we actually thought and the situation in which we actually found ourselves was completely, completely unanticipated. The whole process of research and then us coming out of it was equally unanticipated. Right? So it's a completely different scenario today. Would you agree? Isn't it? So there was a phase last year that, you know, if you had to tap me and say that, look, uh, in another about 10 to 12 months, in another about 3 to 4 quarters, your organization would once again be talking about in terms of building my new global centers across, once again going back to the language of 15,000, 20,000 people to be brought on, you know, 
I can tell you with all honesty that we would have been equal to. Right? We would have been lying if I today I could come back and say, so this is really not the scenario. So what is it about, you know, how does the organization get completely hoodwinked time and again? Right? There are pundits, there are all who have to look back and actually analyze, right? Till they have actually looked it to death in terms of why a certain scenario happened. And I think I can tell you, whole of last about 18 to 20 more months, I continue to I continue to get invitation to participate in uh, forums and seminars, which continuously talked about how to deal with downturn, HR response to downturn, how could we actually do the manage the whole downturn in a reasonable way. Right? So I think the language has changed. It's about how to deal with the resurgence. Right? So the most recent one which I actually talked about in terms of all the lessons from the downturn and the actually for government. So the language has changed and why it has changed is that that's a good view, that's a, it's all down behind. But it's good for us to actually just step, away, step back and be able to see that what we have gone through and what we actually experienced are there some lessons for us to actually draw out of it. And that's what I would like to actually dwell on because uh, the not so, or rather the good news is that while the bus is behind and all of us are today talking about things which we, we enjoy doing and we enjoy talking about, the not so good news is there is no guarantee that something like this may not actually repeat all over again. Okay? And that's the world we live in. And I think it's better that we actually acknowledge it, we embrace, which was my title slide, we embrace this uncertain world we actually live in, and be able to figure out that if it was to actually repeat again, how should my response differ? How should I do things a little differently? And over the next few slides, that's exactly what I will actually walk you through. So very quickly, when I actually think about it, I first one I actually already alluded to. You cannot guess it right. So no point in terms of being heroic about it, right? I mean, I can get into some very, very complex analytics and predictability model in terms of where we are headed and uh, present those nice graphs, right? The way you see the, all the stock market analysts on on CNBC every morning, you know, there's a showtime folks for them. They talk about in terms of this is how the world of stock market is going to be there. And by the end of the day, very few of them are found around, right? Such is the world we actually live in. It's so uncertain. You can't guess it. I mean, think about it. There are so many variables which are not really in our control. Who would have thought, would, would the board of British Airways, uh, would they ever have been discussing about this phenomenon called volcanic ash in the boardroom? Never, right? So only out of nowhere there is this volcanic ash phenomenon which actually grounded all their flights for about a week together. And now they are still counting their losses even to this state, right? So we live with so many variables, right? As the IT industry, we depend so much because our revenue stream. So much of it is dependent on in terms of what's, you know, the regulations and the visa and whatnot. And one small move, one small change in any other part of the globe, right? In any of those governments, that can actually have a very deep impact. So you just got to be right, and you, there's no point in terms of being able to actually just start out and say that look, you know how works right will come. So you have to be nimble, you have to be able to accept that not everything is in your control. And if you actually have that humbleness and humility to acknowledge that not everything is in your control, you will be more eager and you will be more ready to be able to quickly align to a fast ending scenario. Otherwise you will completely be anchored in your own beliefs, which would have told you, look you have been successful all along and this is the model which will actually help you to continue to be so. It's not good to right? The second one is an interesting one. When you look back and you you think about in terms of what went right and what did not, you realize that good judgment, all of us in our life, if we have the benefit of this rewinding the clock on many of our decisions which we took, either as students or as individuals in our own lives, you know, you would like to do certain things differently, isn't it? It comes out of experience. You know that what works or doesn't work. It could be in terms of your choice of friends, or it could be in choice of course, or it could be in choice of careers, or whatnot. Right? Some of those judgments, over a period of time, you said, no, boss, I know. What was, what doesn't work. What should I do, what I should not do. 